All right, and welcome to our first uh, lesson. Uh, so we want to just kind of look at some differential equations and maybe classify them in some different manners. Uh, keep in mind that, um, you know, these may be intimidating just to look at. Don't let that distress you. We want to classify in several ways. And so the first way is we want to classify each differential equation as an ordinary differential equation or a partial differential equation. So you should have done partial derivatives in your calculus career. Uh, we generally teach those at my institution in, in calculus four. So the symbols is going to be the main difference between those two things. So if I have um, uh, just a function, say a, a, a function f of x, a function of x equal to whatever, I might also have a function y equal to whatever. There's several ways to do that. I could have a function of theta. I might have an r that's a function of theta. So there's several ways to, to examine that. But those derivatives speak to the fact that it's an ordinary differential equation. So we might see a y prime. We might see uh, dy dx. And all of that depends on the teacher that you had and, and the notation that they liked. In Cal 1, I tend to use y prime in, uh, until we get to related rates, and you may remember those. So in related rates, I like this notation because it offers a little bit more meaning to me in that class. The same thing is true in differential equations. This is better notation for uh, that uh, to denote the derivative. The second derivative, and I just started writing, so I don't have, it's not very well organized, so perhaps fix it on yours. Uh, the second derivative might be y double prime. Um, this is the notation for the second derivative, which used to always hurt my head. Um, so just as an aside there, that notation is kind of like you're re applying the derivative a second time. So that's where the d squared comes from. You're taking the derivative of y twice, and you're doing it with respect to y twice. So, <clears throat> excuse me, don't let the notation play with your mind. But any mixture of these notations all stand for an ordinary differential equation. As compared with a partial derivative, uh, you might see if I have a, a function of both x and y, then its derivative might be the derivative of x or the derivative of y. Um, you might see um, a function z, and we might have z sub x, z sub y. That means the partial of z with respect to x, the partial of z with respect to y. But typically, the notation that you'll see in here is this notation which stands, that looks kind of like a 2, it's not, it's, uh, I believe my colleagues may correct me, but I believe it's a, a delta. Uh, the, we read that though, it's the partial of z with respect to x, the partial of z with respect to y. And then I can still do the second derivative just like I've done over here, okay? But the notation speaks to whether it's an ordinary differential equation or a partial differential equation. And this is a completed copy is on your uh, Canvas shell, so you can look at that. So whatever I, I choose not to work, then you'll want to go through and, and, and try the remainders of those. And next is to give the order. So the order is gonna be what derivative am I taking? So if I have this, this is a second order. Uh, y double prime would be a second order. Any of this notation would be a first order. A first order. A second order and so forth. So the notation again speaks to that. Identify independent and dependent variables. So that hurts people's head and it's been a while since you've thought about independent and dependent variables most likely. So if I have an f of x function, x can be anything. The function value or the y value depends on x. So in things of this nature, y is the dependent variable, or f of x is the dependent variable, x is the independent variable, as the case may be. This, again, is good, good notation. So let me kind of make some notes there to determine independent and dependent variables. So with notations such as this, 
the numerator is the um, uh, variable that's the dependent variable. So y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. And then lastly, if it's an ordinary differential equation, tell whether it's linear or nonlinear. So you have a sense of, or you should have a sense in your past courses about things that are linear. So typically, things that are linear have an exponent of 1. And that's, a, that's the way I always talk about it in an algebra class, college algebra, high school algebra. If it's linear, exponents of 1. That morphs a little bit into um, um, in, in differential equations. So in, in this class, linear is going to be where the dependent variable has an exponent of 1. Or, and not only the dependent variable, but any of its derivatives. There's probably lots more mathematical ways to talk about linear and nonlinear. Um, this is one of those things you kind of recognize when you see it or you learn to recognize. So um, x can be at any power. If my dependent variable is y and my independent variable is x, x can be doing anything. But the differential part, the uh, dependent variable, has to have an exponent of 1 going on. So keep in mind, a second derivative is not something squared, is it? So a second derivative is just a derivative. First power, that's fine. I can't square anything. I can't be taking uh, a, a sine or cosine of something with a dependent variable. Um, I can't be taking a square root. So any of those things uh, are, are, are no-nos to be able to determine that. So let's look at some, some problems then. <coughs> So maybe I'll look at number uh, two. And again, anything that I don't talk about in this, please complete and check your solutions on your canvas shell. So the first thing we're asked to identify these is ordinary differential equations or partial di differential equations. So my notation is dx dt's, dx is in dt's. So that fits the notation for ordinary differential equations. So while I'm thinking about that, let me just jump and find uh, one like number nine, perhaps. See that partial derivative notation? So automatically that's a partial differential equation. Okay, the next thing we were asked to find is to, or is to talk about is to give the order. So I am taking, looks like I've got a second derivative, a first derivative, and then just the function. This is a second order differential equation. The second derivative notation speaks to that. Identify independent and dependent variables. So I've picked a crazy one to start with. So the numerator, remember, is my dependent variable. So my dependent variable here is x. And my independent variable in this problem is t. And let me just pause right there. We are so used to thinking about uh, something being a function of x. Life is not functions of x. Life is anything, uh, any function. Uh, in this case, x is a function of t, so don't let that hurt your head. And then determine if it's linear or nonlinear. So the derivatives of the dependent variables, I want to be sure nothing funny is going on. So that's just a second derivative. It's not being squared. There's not a square root. Uh, here's the fun uh, first derivative, rather. Nothing's going on with that. Here's the function. It's to the first power. So I'm good. This is a linear differential equation. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, well, I've got a cosine floating around in there. That makes it nonlinear, and that's not true. That's based on the independent variable. Had that been a 3x, it would be nonlinear. This problem is OK. Um, look at number uh, 6. So again, the notation speaks to the fact that it's an ordinary differential equation. It is a second order because of the second derivative. My dependent variable is y. And so again, that's the piece that's going to determine if it's linear or nonlinear. My independent variable is x from the numerator and denominator. And then let's look to be sure um, what's going on in there with those y's. So I'm seeing right away a square root. So I don't even need to look any further. This is nonlinear. So sometimes those are 
kind of hidden, for instance, in number four, and I won't work all of number four for you, but when you multiply out this right-hand side, do you see that x squared that's appearing right there? So that's going to be enough to determine that it's uh, nonlinear. Um, number five, again, that's the first derivative, but I'm squaring the first derivative. And since y is my dependent variable, uh, and I'm squaring its derivative, that makes it be nonlinear. So these are not bad problems. Again, I've worked out some that are uh, scanned and, and posted on Canvas for you. But the other thing I want to introduce you to is just being able to write a differential equation. <clears throat> so we spend some time looking at um, uh, how things change. Remember, a derivative always talks about how things change. And that's the very basic concept of the derivative is a rate of change. We deal with that in Cal 1. Uh, when you deal with related rates in Cal, uh, you should have covered that in Cal 1. Um, you know, circle increasing in air and oil spill or something, or filling up the volume, changing and filling that up. As time goes on, those quantities are changing. So look at what number 11 says. Uh, we want to write a differential equation that shows the rate of change of the population at time t is proportional to the pop population at time t. The rate of change of the population. So we're going to denote that by the change in population with respect to time. So you'll probably have a piece like this in every one of these answers. Uh, the change in population with respect to time is proportional to the population. So some constant of proportionality times the population at some given time. That's my question. Look at number 13. The rate of change of the temperature, big capital T, of coffee at time T, rate of change of temperature. So the temperature, the change in temperature with respect to time is proportional. Proportional to what? Uh, proportional to the difference between the temperature of the air and the temperature of the coffee. So the difference implies subtraction. So the air temperature minus the uh, coffee temperature. So see if you can write um, uh, differential equations for each of those. Again, yeah, not solving any of that. Pay close attention to things like uh, inversely proportional. Think about what that would mean in terms of a constant. And uh, in this case, is proportional to the fourth power. So think about how you'd represent that kind of stuff. And feel free to email me any questions that you have about that. And certainly check your solutions uh, with those that I've worked out on Canvas.